early in the morning, on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw the stone had been taken away. She ran to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they've put him. Peter and the other disciple left to go to the tomb. They were running together, but it, the other disciple ran faster than Peter and was the first to arrive at the tomb. Bending down, he took a look. He saw the linen cloths lying there, but he didn't go in. Following him, Simon Peter entered the tomb and saw the linen cloths also lying there. He saw the face cloth that had been on Jesus' head. It wasn't with the other clothes, but was folded up in its own place. Then the other disciple, the one who arrived first at the tomb, also went inside. He saw and he believed. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. He is risen. He is risen. Indeed, the tomb is empty. Easter has come. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Today is the day we rejoice around the world for the glory that is Easter. So I invite you at this time, if you can, stand up as we sing together. And if you don't know what the words, that's okay. Sing from your heart as we sing together. Christ the Lord is risen today. Welcome one and all to Abbeville United Methodist Church on this Easter Sunday. Happy Easter. What a glory it is to be together today. Our altar is back after Good Friday where it was stripped. We have added the cross and the light of Christ again and we've covered it with the bounty of springtime to let you know Easter is here. Christ is risen. The world keeps going on because Christ is in charge and we, we are all going to be okay no matter what happens. No matter in the coming weeks and months what we face, God is with us and God is carrying us through and God will see us through to eternity. Let us pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you for today. Even though it's a bit dark outside, cloudy and maybe stormy later today, that's okay. It's still Easter Sunday. It is still the day of the resurrection. It is still the day we gather together to worship you. Even in our separate spaces, we worship as one people. And today is one of those days that the world around us is worshiping. Christians in every nation on every spot are finding a way separately but together to worship and celebrate the glorious resurrection. We thank you so much, Lord, for gathering us even with technology. And we thank you for the technology that allows us to do so much more at this time. And we thank you, Lord, for your peace your hope. We thank you that the tomb is empty. The tomb is always empty and we can live knowing that you are reigning in the heavens above, reigning in full Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, reigning over our lives from now through eternity. We pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who taught us to pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Our story continues in the book of John. Mary stood outside near the tomb. As she cried, she bent down to look into the tomb. She saw two angels dressed in white, seated where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head and one at the foot. The angels asked her, Woman, why are you crying? She replied, They have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they've put him. As soon as she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she replied, Sir, if I have carried you, if you have carried him away, tell him where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Don't hold on to me, for I haven't yet gone up to my father. Go to my brothers and sisters and tell them, I'm going up to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene left and announced to the disciples, I've seen the Lord. Then she told them what he had said to her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pray with me. Holy God, the one true God, the God and Holy, this Holy Spirit who is here with us now, the God of Jesus Christ, risen and at the right hand of God the Father, and God the Father who brought it all together for our glory. Thank you. We ask you today to keep our hearts open and our minds open to the words you are speaking to us. And as always, though I am not worthy to speak for you, I ask that you use me as a vessel through which others hear you speak. In the name of our one true God, amen. I want to take you back to that line for a moment, what Jesus said to Mary. Go to my brothers and sisters and tell them, I'm going up to my father and your father, to my God and your God. And this is really a pivotal point in the story of Jesus Christ, not just the resurrection. But these words bring a change from what Jesus has said before. Jesus has always called God Abba, my Father. And Jesus has told us throughout the scriptures, if you follow me, then you follow the Father. You follow my Father. But here in John, Jesus is saying, my Father and your Father, my God and your God. So again, Jesus unites us in that unbelievable combination, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, creator and created as we gather together as the body of Christ, God, who is distant and transcendent, who created the very beginnings of the world and creates us in us today. This same God is our Father, our Lord, who is right there with us, right here in quarantine with us, coming together, supporting us through us, our God who is with us in worship today, sh shouting with joy in our hearts. This is the God that Jesus brought to us and connected us, no longer the distant God we couldn't know, no longer the, the God who, who punished and harmed, but the God of love, the God of unity, the God of family, and not just our blood families, but the family of Christ, the body of Christ, the God who brings us together as one. This is the beginning of that story. And you notice most importantly, Mary is there at the tomb and she sees that the tomb is empty and she sees, she thinks she sees the gardener, but she's seeing Jesus. She just doesn't know it's Jesus until he calls her by name. And he calls her by name and then suddenly she sees him and knows He's real and she's excited and she wants to grab him, I'm sure, and hug him. And he says, don't hug me. Don't grab onto me. I haven't fully ascended to my father yet. And it was that time of transition, that time of change that we'll go through over the coming weeks as we continue to study the story of the resurrection before we get to the ascension. But it's still proof that the tomb was empty, Christ is alive. And in order to see him, to know him, he calls us by name as he called Mary by name. 
Think of that. Jesus calls you by name. God knew who you were when you were formed in the womb. God knows every hair on your head. God knows your name and calls you. That is how we know. We know our one true God. How we know the God that is most personal and close to us. How we feel that presence. That presence we can't explain. How we feel that grace that surpasses all understanding. This is how we are connected to God through the risen Christ. Through the resurrection through today we are easter people we are people who live on this side of the resurrection we go to the cross during holy week but we don't stay there we don't get lost there we move forward because the resurrection is what defines us it's what gathers us it's what unites us as one people and unites us with god the resurrection the tomb is empty god has overcome death through christ through christ we are saved through christ we are free through Christ. We don't have to worry about death and what may come. We know we will always be with the family of God. We know we will always be with the body of Christ. And it comes through today, through this celebration, through our marking the resurrection. Because that is the glory of the Easter people. That is the glory of the Christian people. Life doesn't end today. The world is out there spinning today. The world is continuing. Yes, there's ups and downs, good and bad. We're still in this strange quarantine. We don't know when it's going to end. There's much to fret about and worry about. And if you watch social media and the news and you keep out there paying attention, you're going to hear all that noise that I keep saying, let the noise go. This week especially, let the noise go. And you let the noise go by going into prayer with God and saying, God, I I can't handle it all. I can deal with myself, and I can deal with my family, and I can take care of these things, but the rest of it is too much. I'm worrying too much, and I'm stressing too much. Please take this from me, and God will take it. God will carry that burden just as God has carried all of our burdens because Jesus Christ frees us from sin, and Jesus Christ says, you are my children. Let me carry your burden. And if we're truly confident and if we truly trust and if we truly believe in the resurrection and we believe in the risen Christ and if we truly believe that God is all present yet still present with us, if we truly believe this and we can truly believe that God can get us through these next few weeks and months and we'll be together again, maybe in a new way, maybe in a different way. We don't know how the world is changing. But that's okay, even in the midst of change, even in the midst of a great cycle of shift that this seems the entire planet is in right now, we know that God is constant in that. And God is seeing it through. And God will see us through, not just today and tomorrow, not just through celebration and good times, not just through the most dramatic and traumatic times. God is even in with us in the mundane times, the most ordinary times, the most unique times. Sometimes if you have kids or grandkids, you notice it's not when they're excited or when they're sad that they necessarily talk. Sometimes it's just in the midst of doing dishes or eating supper or doing homework that they just come out with these questions and thoughts. And you see, God knows us that well, just as you know your children. When we sit quiet and we're not burdened by the world or we're not excited, we're just being ourselves in those moments. In those moments, God is with us and can hear us, those deep thoughts, those deep concerns, those wonders of our minds. I wonder if, I wonder whether, what might happen if. God is in there in those mundane moments, especially to hear you and to comfort you and to allow you to express yourself as the best you can. That's why we have to create these mundane moments. We always want the joys. We don't want the lows. We know they're going to come. But we need those mundane moments, those simple moments. We need to be aware of those moments when you're getting dressed, brushing your hair, when you're washing your dishes, when you're in your car, when you can get back into your car, and just driving those quiet times when your brain starts to move. God is moving in there with you. Go to those times. Allow those times to happen. And take those times as moments to unite with God. Because the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit of the resurrection, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that unites us as one, 
your, my God is your God, my Father is your Father, this uniting moment is what brings us into that great sense of unity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, there is no hierarchy. It's hard to imagine how three operate as one. We, we try and understand it in our physical world, but it doesn't make sense. So we, we know it in our hearts. We know it in our spiritual world, three and one, and yet we are brought into that relationship, that pure and beautiful relationship that begins with us today when the resurrection happens, when the tomb is empty. It begins as we are drawn deeper and deeper into this relationship and leaves us with the glory of knowing God is our God. The one true God is our God. It's your God, it's my God. And at any time and any place, I can go and speak to God and work on that relationship. And that's where the onus is on us. We always talk about relationship and that's the one relationship we have to work on, not just with our spouses and our children and grandchildren. We must work on our true relationship with God because it's real and it's been given to us. It is a special gift that comes through the risen Christ, through the resurrection, through today. So let us, especially now, in the coming weeks when it's quiet, when we don't know what's going to happen next, let us truly take time to work on that one relationship. God has granted us, gifted us with this time. If you look at it this way, and it's hard to see it that way sometimes, but God has gifted us with this time to be quiet and to stay home to go out into the backyard and listen to the birds, to look up at the clouds, to take a walk and, and smell the flowers, literally smell flowers and the beauty that is nature right now. Usually our world is run, 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 do, 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 make, 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 something else has to happen, but now we don't have that burden on us. So give those burdens to God and enjoy this gift of quiet. Enjoy the gift of solitude if you have it. Enjoy the gift of just getting to relax, even if you don't know how to yet. You're starting to learn, I know. Enjoy the gift of being able to relax in the world and let God carry your burdens because that is who our God is. That is why we are the Easter people. That is why we celebrate the resurrection because God unites us in that great family of God, one people, one body, continually, continually celebrating that we are God's children, that we are saved, that we are free from the burdens of this world, and that everything will be okay as we get all through this together. Amen? Amen. I want you to listen now as we play another hymn. Uh, this is our prayer for now, a celebration prayer that God is real. He lives. celebrate our faith today so if you will join me in our statement of faith if you will join me in the Apostles Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified dead and buried the third day he rose from the dead he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Join me with me as we open our hearts to prayer this morning. As always, I will open us with prayer and give us a pause for you to unleash your burdens, to give your concerns, to share your joys with the one true God. Let us pray. What a glorious day, Lord. It appears even now the sun is shining outside. Even though we have storms ahead, we ask for your protection from the storms ahead. Those affecting our nation and those affecting the world. Those physical storms of wind and rain and those emotional storms of pain and worry. Lord, we are in a unique time in a unique place, so we ask these prayers of you now and maybe perhaps prayers we've never asked before. We offer them to you now. Holy Lord, we are in the midst of change. We don't know what change is coming. We don't know where this will end or when it will end, but we know you are in the midst. So we ask you, as the change happens, to, to keep it under your control. Help us cope with what is to come. Help us bear what is before us. Help us move through this time with peace and grace, Lord. We pray for those all on the front lines, not just fire and police, but doctors and nurses and healthcare professionals the world around who are working on vaccines, who are working on medicines, who are working on flattening the curve. And we pray for each other, Lord, as we go through this. We pray for those who are ill. We pray for those who are suffering in ways we can't imagine. And we pray for those who suffer under this disease in ways that we can't experience. So we lift all these people to you, all these burdens, all these hopes to you, and put our trust in you that you will carry us through. Whatever befalls us, whatever comes, you will carry us through, Lord. And we pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It's our tradition here at Abbeville United Methodist Church to end with a song after the benediction. So after the benediction, I'm going to play a song for you, a song not so much of Easter, but a song that the mor morning sun rises every day, and no matter what happens, God is new and making us new every day. So I'll leave you in a moment with morning has broken, but first I want to say, go today in peace. Go today in love, and go build a beautiful relationship with the risen Christ. Amen.